Welcome everybody and thanks for joining today's Dreamwakers Daily Conversation. This is our final series of the spring semester and it's our segue to summer featuring lessons learned through sports. This week we're highlighting career role models who work in all facets of sports. So yes, athletes, but also diverse careers in the sports industry. So today we're speaking with Kelsey Taylor, who has been manager of US sports partnerships at Twitter for the past year. And in this role, Kelsey is responsible for Twitter's strategic partnerships with sports leagues and media partners. And most recently, she's worked on the NBA and NBC, NBA and NBC Olympics partnerships. And prior to Twitter sports, Kelsey worked for the NFL for three seasons. So thank you so much for being with us today. We're really looking forward to this conversation. Thank you. No, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Um, so for a lot of us, myself included, uh, the first thing we think about when we hear about a career in sports is professional athletes, obviously. Um, but there are so many other careers in that industry. Can you tell us a little bit more in simple terms about your job and what does sports partnerships mean? Yeah. Uh, so our team, Twitter Sports, essentially works with um, the largest publishers in the sports industry. So when you think of publishers, I mean like the NBA or NFL and also um, broadcast partners in the sports space. So NBC Sports, Turner Sports, um, really everyone in that industry. Um, so we get the awesome opportunity of partnering with them to bring content to the platform. So when you all as Twitter users are scrolling on your feed while you're watching an NBA game, you'll see highlights associated with it so you can engage on Twitter. Um, so we really manage those partnerships with the leagues and those broadcast partners in the sports industry to bring that content to the platform. And then from there, um, you know, we hope that, you know, users engage with it and drive conversation. And we also have the chance to sell that. So we work with our sales team. So think of a sales team as the Twitter representatives who work with Apple externally. When Apple wants to put an advertisement on Twitter, like a six second ad that you might see in front of a highlight, we'll work with that team to say, hey, does Apple want to run a six second highlight in front of an NBA highlight? highlight? Um, so that you can see when you're scrolling on your feed on Twitter, you might see that six second Apple uh, pre-roll, I should really call it, like an advertisement in front of um, an NBA highlight. So that's that's how the two parties come together. So we m mostly work with the partners in the space like the NBA, the NBC Sports of the World, but then internally we also work to make sure that we have um, sales representation when um, so we have advertisements running in front of that content. Interesting, okay. Yeah. So how does that translate to your day to day? Like, what does your work day look like? And I'm sure it's probably changed now versus when we were back in sort of a normal work office environment. But can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so every day is different. Um, it depends on what's going on with my partners. So um, if it's, you know, a normal day, quote unquote, normal day in the office, um, I might be, you know, interfacing with some of my partners to figure out you know, how to adjust their strategy on Twitter. So if um, the NBA wants to engage more with their audience, they might ask me for tools and best practices for how to do that based on what they've done before and what other partners in the space are doing. Um, and then to the point I made earlier about the advertising relationships we have, I might work with our advertising team internally to say, hey, we have all this great NBA content. Um, I know Adidas is a sponsor of the NBA, um, and I might, you know, have actually a call with Adidas and our client team to talk about ways that they can run their advertising against the NBA content. So um, it's it's a lot of meetings I end up having having with you know internal and external parties. Um, but then you know sometimes it's in person stuff. So um, keeping on the subject of the NBA, they had their All Star back in February. Hopefully you had a chance to see that. Um, and so that's something where I'm in person. And so I'm actually in person with my my partners at the NBA. Um, you know, going to meetings with various people from the content team there to the business development team there, um, and also um, working with Turner Sports to see you know, what they have going on. So it can be a very much um, like in the office type of day or working from home as we are now. Um, and and usually with, you know, big temple events, we're actually there in person with our partners to make sure that the content is flowing and um, we have a chance to have that face-to-face -face interaction with our, with our partners. Yeah, that's so interesting. And I mean, things are different now because sports are canceled for lack of a better way of talking about it. Um, has that affected yeah. your day-to-day -day quite a bit? Like what is, 
how, how has that been a change? Yeah, yeah. So, um, as I mentioned, like we'll have a partnership in place with an MBA where we have a certain amount of content that we're getting from them. So, um, we have like you know live streams of the games happening on Twitter. Um, and we'll also have highlights, but when there's no live games, we have to really adjust that uh, strategy, right? So um, as soon as we heard, you know, the NBA season was suspended, you know, we obviously had to make sure the NBA had a chance to, you know, internally figure out how they were going to respond to that um, because, you know, they have their TV channels, they have their digital O&O channels, and they also have partners like us, Twitter, they have partners like Instagram, Facebook. So they're really thinking about, you know, we don't have, live games so we don't have that amazing content that fans are used to how are we going to populate our channels where all this media is going out to our fans and how do we keep them engaged you know so we were a part of that conversation for twitter to say hey you know you don't have live games right now but maybe you want to air throwback games so maybe a miami heat um finals you know game six that everyone wanted to see um or loved seeing and would love to see it again um, so bringing back that to the platform or doing Q and A's. So um, maybe have players who are just sitting in their houses like the rest of us mm -hmm. actually respond to fan questions that they might have. Um, so you have that engagement with not just the league, but the players and, um, you know, also doing differentiated content. So maybe um, like a, a content series where they would have, um, and, and Ernie Johnson, for example, we have a series with him. He's from the Turner Inside the NBA talent set um, who calls a lot of the NBA games. So he's doing a show right now every every Monday and Wednesday on Twitter where he's interviewing different people in the in the in the league. So um, he did one with Dame Lillard. He did one with Adam Silver and different people across um, that league so it's a it's a great way of interacting with the nba in a way that we haven't before because usually all the negotiating of what content we get happens pretty early on but this was just on our feet like what do we think fans want to see um how can we really engage them how can you you know make sure you're still getting content out um so that we can continue that conversation around the nba um so definitely yes it um changed everything um and the ways that we work with our partners and, and the nba i was just giving that as an example but imagine us having to do that across all of our partners right yeah. um so it's definitely changed how we do things but it's for the better you know we've been able to you know dig deep and roll up our sleeves with our partners in a way we haven't before um to serve you know together our, the fans in the space yeah interesting it's such like a, a time for creativity and figuring out how we're going to collaborate and move forward exactly. in so many industries very cool um, so did you know that you wanted to be involved in sports as a career since you were young? Like, what has your academic and career journey been to get you to where you are now? Yeah, um, it's probably not traditional. Um, not that any path is really traditional, but um, I grew up in football. So my dad played in college. Um, my brother played as a kid. And my dad actually started a Pop Warner football team in our town. So if you don't know what Pop Warner is, it's essentially like um, middle school and high school kids that are able to play football on fr Friday, Saturday, and Sunday games. Um, so I grew up going to um, like li literally breathing, eating <laughs> football my whole life growing up, um, at least for the first like 10 years of my life. Um, so I had a love of football, like the game of football. Um, but career eyes, I went to University of Pennsylvania, specifically the Wharton School of Business. And um, while there, uh, it was very evident that, you know, you could go uh, several different paths. But most of my peers, you know, we thought about going into the financial industry or maybe consulting. I decided to go the um, investment banking route. So I worked at Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Um, and there, I, I really had a good understanding of um, the financial inner, inner workings of media companies because I specialize in technology, media, and telecom. Um, as investment banking analysts, you can specialize in particular sectors. So I knew that I wanted to have a career in the media entertainment industry. Um, and I felt as though going into investment banking it would give me a really good understanding of not just that industry and the financial inner workings, but also, you know, things like PowerPoint, Excel, how to do quantitative, qualitative analysis, um, things that you might be harder to learn later on um, because it takes a lot of training and a lot of repetition. So um, I really enjoyed 
that for the time being, but I knew that was a means to get me into the industry that I had always dreamed to be a part of. So I finished that two year program there um, and then went to work for the National Football League, as most people will call it, the NFL. Um, and so I worked there for three seasons and on that team, um, it was the media strategy and business development team. And so the way I, I could describe it is we essentially manage the media rights for the league. So anywhere you saw media from the NFL, that was something that our team negotiated with those media partners. So, uh, for example, you'll see Sunday Night Football on NBC. That's a relationship that our team managed and had to negotiate because you know there's a license fee in place where NBC has to pay the NFL for the rights to be able to distribute that game to fans. So we thought about the landscape, you know, the shift from TV to digital. Um, everyone's not just watching, you know, a full three hour game on their TV. Now they're looking at highlights on their phone. They want to see content everywhere, wherever they want it, when they want it. So we had to think about, you know, how do we deploy these rights to make sure we're getting to the fans that we're trying to reach. Um, so that involved digital relationships, TV relationships. So um, I, I worked on our Thursday night football relationship where we had a deal with uh, Fox Sports for the TV portion. And then we also had a relationship with Amazon Prime Video for the digital portion. So if you wanted to watch the Thursday night football games on your phone or on your tablet, you can sign into Amazon Prime Video and you can watch it there. So that team was really focused on you know, understanding the media landscape and where um, NFL's media belonged and how we could get it out to the fans that we wanted to reach. Um, and then actually negotiating those deals to make sure there was a, the correct value exchange and then um, managing that partnership to make sure that, you know, it actually produced what we had expected it to produce. Um, and so from there, uh, I came to Twitter Sports, which I described earlier. <laughs> cool. Wow. So many twists and turns. I love hearing people's career journeys because they're literally never a straight line. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so on a lighter note, I have to ask, and maybe you've already told us the answer and it's obvious, but what is your favorite sport and why? Football. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I just, I grew up on it and um, being able to work for the NFL just gave me a whole new appreciation for it because as a kid, um, you know, I watched football all the time and I was a cheerleader for probably five minutes. Um, but I got a chance to be in and around the sport. Um, but to actually work for the NFL and see the inner workings of how you actually bring a professional football game to the fans um, was really a great experience. And I, I would say I love it so much because. Um, I think I, I grew up with a dad who taught us lessons in the form of football. So teamwork was always about, you know, you know, he would parallel it to like a football team or having a quarterback and like a leader, um, making sure that everyone has to play their role in order for the game to be successful. So he, uh, because of his passion for football, he really translated the lessons that he would teach us throughout life. Um, through, you know, parallels in, to the football game. So I think I just really grew up really appreciating it. And then also it's fun, you know, on a Sunday watching a bunch of football, rooting for your team. I'm a Giants fan. They haven't been the best, but I'm trying to stay loyal. And I, I think we can we can break out at some point soon. Um, but it's a really great sport to follow. Um, so many different positions, so many different players, um, and, and really appreciating that journey. Um, and it all culminating into, you know, that NFL job that I had where I actually got to see, you know, what all goes into it, the production, the advertisements, the marketing, um, the entire, you know, soup to nuts to, to that eventually shows up on your screen on a Sunday night. Um, so that's that's my favorite sport. I think I've, I've grown to really love the NBA. Um, I've also um, grown up around friends and family who's um, basketball and the NBA is their number one sport. So the NBA is is very close behind football. Um, and as I mentioned, I manage the NBA relationship, which is one of my favorite partnerships to manage. So um, I would say the NFL and football as a sport is my favorite, um, but the NBA as a league is, is very close behind. <laughs> nice. Wow, your dad must be so thrilled that you've found this yeah. path. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> um, so could you share a little bit about what it's like to be a woman in this industry and how that maybe has changed over the course of your career? Yeah, um, being a woman in a sports industry, in a tech industry, and in a uh, financial services industry, right, are all experiences that I've had 
um, during my career. And I would say um, there's a difference, you know, in each of those industries. But I think the main thread is that they are male dominated industries. And um, being a woman is it definitely requires confidence. Um, and it requires you to really know that, you know, your voice should be heard, needs to be heard. Um, and your opinion is one that um, is valued. And um, what I found, especially in the sports industry, is women in sports, although there aren't that many of us, we have a very strong connection. Um, those of us in this industry really hold each other down, have each other's backs and know that, you know, we're in this together. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a male boss who is a huge proponent of women in sports, not just, you know, me as a professional woman in the industry, um, like in, in, a, in a business sense, but also like our league partners in the women's space. So I manage like our WNBA relationship or our Women's Tennis Association relationship. And he's a huge advocate and a proponent for that. So I would say um, the, the being a woman in the, in the, in the male dominated industries, the, the advice I would give for any women who want to be in financial services or um, the tech industry or sports in all these male dominated spaces, it's really, you know, that confidence that I mentioned, um, sharing your opinion, making sure, you know, you do your homework and you feel very confident because confidence doesn't just come in, you know, just out of the air. Like you, you really want to make sure that you study what you're supposed to study, you know, your stuff so that you can speak confidently in the room being put together, like appearances are really important. So, you know, I work at Twitter so I can wear jeans and a t-shirt to work if I want to, but you know, they're going to be neat. Like my hair is going to be neat. Like it's important that you physically present yourself in, in a way for people to take you seriously. And I, and I would say that should be the same for men. And it usually is, but I think for women, like it's for, for me, I found that a lot of my mentors and people that I mentor in the space, what I found is um, if you can just be very well-rounded in your confidence um, and and speaking your truth and your opinions in the room and also presenting yourself the right way, you will most likely see see success in the space. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that goes even more so for us women of color. Um, so as a woman of color, you have that extra piece where you really want to make sure, you know, um, you have that confidence and you're doing your homework and you're speaking up. Um, so you can be sure to have that powerful voice in, in whatever spaces that you're in. Yeah, that's really important and sometimes difficult advice. So thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. So I imagine that it's been a fun career. I mean, you get to work in a field with something that you love. I mean, you've worked with NBA, NFL, you've got your work at Twitter. Can you share about a fun favorite story or something that sticks out from your career that is just like a highlight? A highlight. Um, yes, I would say um, a one. So I, I, I mentioned I grew up in football. Um, my dad obviously had the Pop Warner team, but my brother has played football since he was four years old. I have a very close relationship with him. We're about two years apart, um, so he's always been on, you know, on his football journey over the years. And um, when I joined the NFL, uh, one of my favorite um deal that I had a chance to work on was a draft and combine relationship with ESPN and ABC and um I I truly have an understanding and the reason why I mentioned my brother um is because I understand for players I haven't been through it myself but I've seen it firsthand the fight that it takes um to get to the league and to live out your dreams and combine and draft are really those uh events that allow you to uh, showcase your talent and have a shot at being um, a professional athlete in the sport that you've always dreamt of of seeing or, or being a part of. So um, it was a beautiful experience for me to be able to be at draft and combine and um, have had worked on the partnership that brought you know that content to fans, um, so that you could really see the fight and the grit that players are 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 you know, fighting to get to their, their dreams. So combine and draft are my favorite events because it really, um, you know, during an, a Sunday night football game, you know, you do see that fight and you see, you know, players going at it to, to win a game. But I think it's different when you see, you know, a combine or a draft where 
people are working hard to get to that dream and then finally realizing it when you know the giants call your name to join their team um so that was really fun for me um but i would say um at the at twitter one of my favorite relationships as i mentioned is um the nba and um it's a joint partnership with turner sports and um I went to All Star a couple months ago and had a chance to um, actually see the content come to life. So as part of our relationship, we actually have a, a specifically produced live show um, that Turner puts on uh, for for Twitter specifically. And so um, they essentially are live streaming the second half of the game, and it's following an isolated camera of a player um, and being able to be there and see it and the talent um like the cat the, the the talent that was actually speaking to the game was uh Shaq and D Wade and Adam Lefko, Candace Parker like you know names in the industry that you know if you know basketball and being able to be there see them calling the game and all that being for Twitter and a relationship that I had fostered with um the NBA was one of my uh favorite moments to be a part of just to you know, be at my desk and working on things and, see, uh, you know, being on phone calls and in-person meetings to then actually being at, you know, such a huge event and seeing it come to life was a really uh, fun experience. So I would say the, those two, uh, one being my NFL experience, one being my Twitter experience, um, were two of my favorite highlights um, as a part of my experiences thus far. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Well, also kind of shifting gears again a little bit, I know that you're part of a sorority and sisterhood has played a role in your life. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the importance of having a strong peer group or the role of mentorship that's been a part of your life? Yeah, um, I'm a firm believer in, you know, a lot of success definitely comes from your hard work, but also the relationships that you make. Um, uh, I am a part of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I, um, joined while I was at college at University of Pennsylvania. It's the Gamma chapter, and I definitely um, love my sisters and my sorority sisters in that space. And um, as I mentioned, um, being in the sports industry, women in sports, like there's a sisterhood in that too. So I've definitely learned the value of um, having groups that you can lean on, but that you know you also show up for others in that space as well. Um, and that really helps, you know, throughout your uh, career. And I think fostering those relationships, giving to them um, and receiving from them is a really important piece in, as you work your way through your career. So, you know, where I might have started out more so asking for help and leaning on people who are older in my sorority or um, mentors that I found in the spaces that I wanted to be in, as I'm getting older and making my way through the industry, I'm now making sure that I'm carving out time for others who might have questions for me um, and might need my help to, to navigate these industries that they're looking to be a part of. So I think it's a combination of finding the spaces that you want to be a part of and then trying to find pe both peers and mentors in the space that can help you along the way. Um, and then, you know, when it's time, you know, giving back as well. So once you have reached that goal and once you have reached that position that you know you were hoping to get to, um, there's probably going to be you know a young woman or a young man or whoever um, who wants to also achieve that similar goal. And so it's you know I believe your duty to to go back and, and help them too. So um, yeah, I I 100% see so much value and 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 others being a part of your journey as you're as you're trying to achieve your goal. Absolutely, and that's a huge part of what Dreamwakers is trying to do, you know, giving people these options and these connections of, and the ability to sort of see themselves in the various careers they could have in the future. So yeah. We really appreciate speakers like yourself taking the time to just share and let people learn from your paths. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So another question for you, our second to last, um, people who are missing sports in this time and are just like sad because things are canceled, uh, what can they be doing? Where should they turn to watch until sports return? <laughs> yeah, um, so I would say Twitter, I mean, selfishly, I know that's where I work, but there's a whole lot of sports content. It's, um, you know, a lot of our league partners are airing throwback games. So if you want to see your favorite games and those moments, um, they're usually airing those on Twitter. 
um, your favorite athletes are doing, you know, question and answer sessions where they're taking questions from fans and responding to them. Um, and I would say also just um, a lot of our partners are, are doing a lot of um, like community outreach right now, just given the pandemic. Um, and so they're looking for support, you know, for fans to engage with, you know, the messaging they're trying to put out to the world about how they're supporting. So, um, you know, just following your favorite handles, um, like whether it's at NBA or at LeBron James or uh, Tom Brady or um, at Patriots, like anyone who you, um, you know, love to usually follow in the space, if you just check out, you know, their Twitter handles, um, they usually have, you know, a lot of stuff going on right now um, because they understand, you know, fans are missing their sport. Um, they're really missing their sport and um, they're trying to to fill that need the best they can. Um, so I would just I would just peruse and, and check, you know, what your favorite uh, players or teams or uh, leagues have going on. Um, and then usually if they have, um, you know, TV things happening, that they'll tell you on Twitter too, like, hey, tune in on TV to um, our our this next programming we might we might have. Um, so yeah, I would say selfishly, you know, it's it probably sounds <laughs> like I'm just saying because I work there, but we do have a lot going on on Twitter in terms of sports content. It's a very cool way to engage. It's almost like you're actually talking to the person. In real life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so to wrap it up, this one final question, or just sort of a chance to give some tips do you have any advice or just parting words that you hope people who watch this today leave with yeah um i was just saying you know as you figure out what it is that you want to do anything's possible and um if you can you know do your research and make sure that you know you're as knowledgeable as you can be on the subject and you also do your research to find out you know who else might be able to help you on your journey like feel free to reach out to people, use resources um, to get there because you don't really, you don't have to do it by yourself. Um, and then in, in general, like, you know, I know this is a really difficult time and especially for a lot of you who might be trying to enter certain industries who you're seeing, you know, who have a lot of layoffs and um, are struggling as companies. Um, definitely stay at it, stay up to date on what's going on in the industries reach out to people people have more time on their hands now that they're at home um they're willing to respond to linkedin messages and emails um and engage so i would take advantage of that um and really reach out to those who you might know or who you might not know um in the spaces that you that you hope to be in and and you know just be it's going to take some patience it's going to take a lot of work um but I, it's possible um i'm definitely a resource if there are any questions you might have about you know, the financial industry, the tech industry, the sports industry, anything based on my experiences that might be of interest to you. Um, and I'm sure there are others um, like me in other industries, you know, you might be interested in, in pursuing. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic advice. And thank you so much for that offer and for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, and I appreciate you for having me. Um, and I and I hope to uh, hear from some of you if you have any questions. Absolutely. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to today's Dreamwakers Daily Conversation. You can join us here at 1 p.m. Eastern for the rest of our Segue to Summer Sports series. And in case you miss them, these videos will be on our Facebook page and they're also on YouTube after they air. So you can check them out there. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you next time.